Welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, a show about motorsports, where two blokes just keep chatting about uh, the weekend's events. Uh, I'm Alex, joined by Ivan. Unfortunately, Daniel is missing tonight. It is, he is missing. He is. We he miss is, you, mate. This is weird. Yeah, this, this is, is weird. There's a, big, there's a big gap here. So um, anyway, uh, let's uh, get on with the yeah the action of the uh, of the weekend. There was quite a bit, not not ov- overly amount of uh, motorsport over the weekend, but actually more two-wheel racing than four-wheel. Yes, actually, a, a lot of two wheel action um, from all across, you know, from Australia to France uh, to Italy, and uh, I guess look, let's just kick off with the um, biggest, the biggest one, MotoGP, the San Marino Grand Prix, which is really weird because in two weeks' time yeah, we're going to go again. Romagna. Yeah, but this time it's Emilia Romagna. Yes, so you can change the name whatever you want. It's still the Mizano. It's yeah, still... <laughs> still great. It's still Mizano. It's still action-packed and well the sprint wasn't action-packed but the race was yeah i mean look qualifying was very very interesting you know obviously once again mark marquez failed to deliver in qualifying which you know obviously made his weekend more complicated you know starting at a ninth on a track that it is very very difficult to overtake in these motor gv bikes i thought he was gonna have a tough weekend it was looking that way it definitely was looking that way. And um, the sprint, uh, look, the sprint, uh, I just sure won't be, I won't be remembering it, uh, um, you know, for too long. It was very, very boring. You know, Jorge Martin took off like a rocket. Uh, Bagnaya was shocked <laughs> and just yeah. sat behind him the whole race. Uh, Morbidelli, I mean, that was great. Finally. Um, he's coming to form. And, and I think next year with the VR46, uh, Having one year under his belt, remember he crashed in preseason. He, he crashes quite a bit, but he does crash quite a bit. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, that that, that happened in the race. Yeah, but he is a former vice world champion. Is he? He is. What's vice again? Second in the championship. Oh, that's right. Yes, he almost became world champion. True. Um, you know, Juan Mia won that year. Oh, that weird year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, weird okay. year. The weird year. The, the I, guy... fe- I even forget that Juan Mia won a championship. I know. It's odd. But... It's pretty crazy. But um, he is coming to form um, with, with the Ducati. Yes. It, it is starting to click. And uh, the sprint, yeah, Jorge Martin, Pekka Bagnaya, Morbidelli. And then Marquez, uh, just at the last lap, was able to get P5 with an overtake. Might I add, at 255 <laughs> kilometers per hour at the apex of I, the corner. I saw that, yeah. I mean... Yeah. 31 years old, but like, I mean, he's still crazy, a, like they, a teenager. They don't care. They just, they see a gap and go for it. It's, yeah. So it's that, that, that was spectacular. And uh, coming into the race, so obviously, you know, warm up uh, on the Sunday morning, everything was clear, everything was good. And then nope. the clouds just started to hover <laughs> over the track. It, and it's, it made everyone nervous. Definitely. Definitely. It was, it was nervous times, but it was still dry. It and was. Race kicks off. It's dry, and then dry but dark. Dark, very dark. And it all. It was a bit of suspense in the air. You know, the bikes were warming up, uh, which is always a sign that La- you know lap could've... times are amazing. Morbidelli did the fastest lap of the race before what you're about to say. I know. <laughs> and um, uh, Pecco got a good start. Jorge was right behind him, and I think what's really, really interesting about it is that Jorge went for the overtake. Failed, almost hit Bagnaya, almost crashed, and then he was kind of like stuck, you know, with uh, Morbidelli right behind him and all that. And then rain. And then rain. And everything goes, I mean, not everything, but like. But it only rained for about a minute. It rained for one lap. Yeah. Now, that, I, I've I, never seen that before. I, I don't understand this decision. For those of you that don't know what happened, so you got Pecco, Francesco Bagnaia in the lead. You got Jorge Martin right behind him. You got all the riders, which Catching have got nothing up. to lose. They're all right behind them, taking huge risks while it's yeah. pretty wet. That, that gap shrunk big. While it's pretty wet, and then you have this crazy thing that has taken place, and that is that out of nowhere, 
Jorge Martin decides pit. to pit before Peko. Swap bike. Why? Think think about it. Like we've seen it time and time again. We are, we were actually talking about this. It Nine was... times out of ten, yeah, going into the pits early ends up not paying off. Yeah, the only thing I can defend Jorge's uh, decision was you know how when, especially in F one, they make their pit stop calls based on the car in front. Yes, if they don't pit, you pit. If they pit, you don't pit. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Maybe that that's is the what... only thing I can back him up on. I think what was really fascinating was Peko and Enya Bastianini being locals and having the track knowledge. They actually said that you can actually smell when it's time wow. to go into the pits. There's a certain smell coming off okay. the track that says okay. it's w- too wet now. You need to pit. And, wow. they, go, and they go, we wow. didn't smell that. And so since we didn't smell it, we didn't go in the pits. Wow. And I think it was well, really I fascinating. What the smell is. You know, even um, even Mark Marquez, you know, who's who does take gambles in these situations, he, his mindset was, I'm just going to follow the locals. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he did. And then he passed the locals. And then he passed the locals. <laughs> and then he took off from yeah. the locals. I was actually surprised that he took off because, as I was saying, before, the, before this one lap of craziness happened with the wet, he wasn't keeping up with the leaders at all. He wasn't. And I think what's uh, really, really interesting is that in the first couple of laps, so Holger Martin Pitts realizes that he's made a mistake. He's two seconds a lap slower than the guys. He then decides to pit again. He's looking at his pit crew. He's looking at Why his bike. Why did just stand there? That was weird. I think they were just in disbelief <laughs> that they had made that call, um, gobsmacked by all of it. And then what really um, stood out is that when Marcus took the lead, Peko seemed to almost be playing around with him. He was faster. That's my point. And then out of nowhere, I think maybe he got the board. Maybe nerves kicked in because... I think he knew that Martin had screwed up. Yeah. And he just thought second place is good enough. You know why I love the Rossi so much? Because he didn't care about that. He didn't care about that. He just went for the he win. He would have gone for the win. Yeah. No, I understand. He would have gone for the win. And, and I know that there's a lot of pressure and, and I know the pace is incredible these days and it's very, very easy to make a mistake. And then it almost threatened to rain again. Yeah, that was weird. That was weird. And so I can understand, but another five points would have been really, really good, you know? Um, it would have. But very, very interesting. So, yeah, Marcus takes off and then, yeah, he puts in this phenomenal pace and he does end up getting the fastest lap of the race as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So, Jorge Martin, 26 points. Seven. Seven. That's the gap. In one hit. One race. I don't know what it is about <laughs> this guy. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's the fear. This is going to be controversial. I don't know if it's the fear of success that actually okay. is causing him okay. to make these mistakes. Indonesia last year, five seconds, I think, in the lead, throws the race away. And that was the pivotal moment that he threw the championship in the end. Mm, mm. This time, works so hard to build a gap, does a brilliant sprint race, looks like he's competitive. Takes a stupid gamble. It made no sense. Yeah, but hang on. In uh, yeah, the gamble is crazy. But if if right, if it actually rained more, he'd look like a hero. But it, he didn't. Yeah, but risk to reward. Yeah, your oh, main championship risk. rival is right in front of you. Big Whatever risk. he does, you, yeah, do. you do. If you both crash, then you both crash. Yeah, this is how you'd still have the 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 bigger lead in the championship. Yeah, correct. So, so like, yeah, it, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. In it, in that sense, that makes a lot. Marcus more sense is far away. Saying. Keep in mind, up not until, anymore. Up until that race, mm-hmm. he was seventy five points away. Fifty one. Fifty one. And now it's starting to get dangerous. Sorry, fifty three. Yeah, and the shark is starting to smell blood. Mm-hmm. And Bastion is there as well. Sixty two behind. Still not, still yeah. not out of it. Well, inconsistent. A couple of weeks ago, I said it was a two-horse race. Not anymore. I don't think. I don't think so. I, I, I think, think there's so. too many mistakes being made at the front. Um, it, long gone are the days of the dominant champions. Whether it's because everything is more competitive these days, yeah. Like you know, Rossi used to run away with championships. Uh, Stoner ran away with his championships. Um, Jorge Lorenzo 2010 ran away with his championship and about Bignaya like what is it like two titles in a row in the final round uh, I think just one in the final round two 
Two? Both. Both, 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 final both went to the final round. Okay. Like yeah. uh, with Quattararo, the first one. Oh, uh, yeah. But, but, but. And the second one against uh, Jorge. And it might happen again. And it might happen again. Yeah. Like it's uh, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I don't really mind the closeness. It draws for good action. Oh, definitely. I'm not complaining about it at all. But yeah, your point is, yeah, where where have those days gone? And I think it's based on yeah the machinery you've got. Yeah, you know, like Quattararo won a championship what three years ago. Yeah, and now he barely scrapes into the top ten. Speaking of on the same team. Speaking of breaking news. What? Okay, go for it. Repsol Honda, after. A long, long partnership from 1995. Oh, the brand, yeah, yeah. yeah. Repsol Honda, Repsol, yeah, Repsol, and Honda gone. I just see. I just said Repsol Honda because that's how long it's been. Yeah, well, it's gone. So who's gonna back them up? No one yet. Not sure. Uh, but what is sure that they said that they will try to still be involved in motorsport. And so, which team are they gonna go with? Oh, you reckon they're gonna ditch them and go somewhere else? They're gonna go somewhere else. Could it be the new? Pramac, maybe? maybe? Could be. They might need a sponsor. Could be. Could be. Could be Yamaha Pramac. Uh, could be Aprilia. Um, I'm just thinking from a Spanish point of view. Because um, they are Spanish. So which team has Who the... Are? Oh, they could go Grassini with two Spanish riders. Yeah, but their team's Italian. Yeah, the team's Italian. But the and riders they showed are... it this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With their celebration, my God. Oh, my. We yeah. sure do well... know I had a party, though. Come on. But well, maybe Repsol just a ditching two wheels and go somewhere else. Maybe because uh, I'm off topic here, but on our, on trading paints I race and there's a lot of Repsol car liveries out there that look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, GD3, yeah, Le Mans. There's a fair few. They'll be oh yeah, they'll be involved in most, but one way or another. But obviously, they're not getting the TV exposure that they used to get. They're not getting anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Although I must say. I've written down the list, and three Yamahas got points. Yamaha coming back. The, sorry, not say not Yamaha. Sorry, Honda. Three Hondas got points, not Repsol. What? Three Hondas got three points. Hondas got points. Zarco N- Nakagami. Oh, I might as well go through the list. Let's go through the list. All right, we'll go through the points list um, first. Obviously, we had Marquez win the race, uh, followed by Bagnaia and Bastiani. Uh, so all Ducati podium. The KTMs were a bit interesting. Um, Brad Bender finished fourth ahead of Bedseki in fifth. Alex Marquez uh, finished sixth. Quattararo seventh. Jack Miller, who was one point third. I know. And if the rain kept going, he would have stayed there. But unfortunately, it dried up and he fell back uh, to eighth. DJ Antonio, DJ Antonio was ninth. Paul Spargo, the wild card in the top ten. So three KTMs in the top ten. Yes. Unfortunately, Acosta crashed. That was um. Acosta yeah. crashed, but he's a rookie. Yeah. You know, it's expected. But he was running third. Yeah, he was. But yeah, he crashed out of fourth at the time. Yeah. Um, Oliveira f- uh, flew the flag for the Aprilias. They were nowhere to be seen. Uh, Johan Zarco, this is the start of the Honda uh, points. Johan Zarco was 12th. Taka Nakagami is 13th. The wild card, Stefan Brattle, who I don't think has finished ahead of anyone this year, <laughs> came 14th ahead of. Jorge Martin, who got the last point spot. That's the only reason why he went back on the track, really. Yeah. Yeah. Was... And, and, and I mean, Maverick Vinales gave him a hard time for that for that one point as well. I do have to say, though, that uh, MotoGP testing happening today is going to be super, super interesting. Okay. So we've got some very, very interesting things happening during the MotoGP test uh, um, today. We have a new evolution of the KTM. So Paul Espargo was running the 2025 new version. That in the race, in the race, wow! That uh, uh, Pedro Costa most likely will be testing today. Okay, we have a, a completely apparently for the third season in a row, a completely redesigned yeah, Honda yeah. that they're bringing out. And um, I mean, Darko said, Get this bike and chuck it in the bin. The 2024 bike, <laughs> he said, There's nothing about it, just get the whole bike and just chuck it in the bin. Just so, let, it so let's see what the 2025 Honda looks like. We have uh, very interesting times at Ducati because they're, um, everybody's looking forward to is Marc Marquez going to get an opportunity to try the 2025 bike? Okay. Uh, it makes sense to me. Why wouldn't you? He's, the, he's your factory rider next year. Wouldn't you get him to try? Are they allowed to? Is that the problem? I don't see why not. Yeah, well, he's not a Ducati rider yet. 
Well, I mean, he is a Grassini rider, yeah, but are they... It depends if Grassini let him do that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's... Yeah, okay. That's... I mean, at the very least, let him try a 2024. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> 20... he's, he's still on a 23. We still forget that he is on a 23 bike. Yeah, that's you know? very true. And, um, yeah, I, I think the last two races have shown how hungry he is, how comfortable he's becoming with the bike. Um, he's still... I still don't see the, you know, the 2019 Repsol Honda Mark Marquez just yet. It's getting there. But it's coming. It's coming. So that's going to be interesting. We'll be interested to see what Aprilia bring. We'll be interested to see what um, KTM brings apart from this 2025 evolution. Who gets to ride it? I'm sure Maverick Vinales will be there and Enya Bastianini with binoculars, you know, just looking at making sure. Yeah. You know, I always find funny um, how they have the 20, well, whatever years next, the test day, the day after Valencia's race. Yes. It's like they finish the race. All right, you do your celebrations. Now change clothes. Yes. Whatever your team you go on, you, you then tomorrow. I know. That I find that so funny. It's fascinating, you know. And actually, you know, they have the um, they have the gala, and then they it's a Tuesday test, so they have one day off. Okay. To yep. recover. Yep. yep and yep, then yep. they go straight into testing on Tuesday. That's yeah. To it's, me, it's it's fascinating. To everybody. But, that, but that's so, good. Why waste time? Some of them just wear like black levers because their levers are not ready yet. Yeah, Marquez did that. Yeah. This year. yeah. Yeah. And like um, I think it's gonna be a fascinating, you know, like Marquez on factory bike, um, Enya and Vinales with KTM. Yep. Um, um, you know, the Gen Antonio will be on a factory bike. So there's only one there's only one grid slot available left in there. Yes. Which is the Pramac. Which apparently will go to Miller. Yeah, I can which see apparently that. he because he's Aussie. What's that got to just keep an Aussie in there? Just yes, just to keep an Aussie in there. And he's like, I, I don't want to be here if it's for my nationality. I mean, you'd be there for whatever it takes. <laughs> I mean, question, but Remy Gardner's a Yamaha rider. Does that make a difference? I don't know. Probably yeah, not. but he didn't perform during his two wild cards. True, but neither does the Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Full stop. True, but yeah, no, the gap was quite, quite big. And he did have two, two races. To yeah. Try that's... and prove something. I think, yeah, Miller's. Interesting. And who's the Oliveira's there in the yeah. promo? Yeah. Okay. Or Tony uh Tony Abolino. That was the other talk. Okay. Who's the um guy who's replaced uh Nakagami? He's also Japanese, isn't he? No, he's from Thailand. Ah. Yes. I don't know who about him. Chantra. Yeah, okay. Do you know much about him? Yeah, he's great. Okay. He's Where did he come from? From Thailand. No <laughs> what categories? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's from, but where did he race? Um, he's very competitive in Moto2. Okay. So um, yep. Ayagura, I think, is a fantastic talent. He's now the championship leader. Mm. Um, he's going to be great um, in MotoGP with Trackhouse. I think that they've done a really, really good job at signing him, not Roberts. Um, Chantra will be good for Honda when Honda eventually does come back to being competitive. Mm. Um, there are also talks of uh, 2026 BMW coming in. Ooh. So that could be really, really fascinating as well. New regulations in 2027. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't think yeah. we're going in the right direction. Yeah, they were, yeah, not good. But overall, what an exciting uh, San Marino round. Yeah, and uh, let's look forward to the next one, which is the exact same track. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in two weeks. That's it. <laughs>